Welcome back to another Create Mod tutorial. You'll notice that I am not in the standard empty glass void of a world, and I'm in my actual series, my Create Mod Survival World, where in the last episode I built this beautiful courtyard. And also, which is the focus of the video today, these two machines that I built and designed, which let you refill automatically the large filling tank and large fueling tank so that you can power brass jetpacks or anything else that these are used for. Just as a little preface, this does require the create stuff in additions mod. If you just hover over the object, it'll say what mod it's from. And this one is create stuff in additions. So, I mean, if you don't have this mod, then perhaps this tutorial isn't for you, but I have a bunch of others on my channel. If you want to see some more like this redstone farm or this brass and copper and zinc farm, or the moss farm over there, or a billion others. But we're focusing on this one. And this is a really cool design that for some reason in the new Create Mod updates, brass filters with respecting data set to them. With a list filter like this, when you filter for a large filling tank with full water, doesn't actually work for some reason, even though we have respect data selected. This doesn't work anymore and I'm not sure why. So this is a bypass and a cheaper method because we're using it just a standard andesite funnel instead of a brass one and it uses just redstone. So it's andesite only, it's a little bit cheaper. It just requires either an infinite lava or an infinite water source depending on which one you're making. But I think that's enough with plugging my create mod series. So let's get into the tutorial. We are now over in the creative world with the same two farms here. We have water and lava. They are effectively the same thing. The only difference is that we have just an infinite water source generator thing here with just two water sources. And then this one, we need an infinite lava source to feed this lava source block here that will get picked up by the filler. For those that don't know the large filling and fueling tanks, if you right click it, then it will pick up lava and store it as fuel or as water. The issue is that you can't just like pump this into a depot or into this item at all. It needs to be right clicked by a player. So the only way to do this is with a deployer right clicking it and picking it up like this. When we're running the farm, you can see that this observer sees when lava is being picked up and placed. And then while that's happening, it locks this funnel until that stops for a certain period of time. You'll see this go unread in a second here when this stops filling up and then the large filling tank will drop out just like that, and then it will relock pretty much immediately. The main locking system is just coming from this block of redstone here. This can obviously be a, like a torch or a lever or anything that powers this, which is powering a power latch. The power latch, if you don't know how this works, if there's power coming in from behind, it is just a normal redstone pulse that is being sent. If power comes in from the side, it turns it off. As you can see, power in from the side, it's off, even though behind it is on. And we use that so that when the observer is powering this thing, this will turn off, but this one will turn on, still locking the hopper so that when the observer is seeing lava be taken away, which means the fueling tank is not yet full, we don't drop it out. Then when the observer stops seeing lava being taken away, it will no longer send redstone here, which means eventually this one will turn off unlocking the hopper, letting the fueling tank drop out. And then two ticks later, you see 20 ticks and 22 ticks, two ticks later, this will turn back on, relocking it. And this is needed so that if you have multiple, let's say four large fueling tanks going in at a time, when this one becomes full, this will drop out. And then two ticks later, it'll turn back on, preventing, let's say another one from coming out. We can test this here by, if I remove this, you'll see that all of the fueling tanks will go into the deployer straight out onto this hopper before the deployer can pick up any lava with the new fueling tank. It turns out that this is actually directional and you can see that just then it happened where this large fueling tank did not get through quick enough. So it dropped out at 100 even though the rest of the system is still here. We don't have the initial off switch which is why this has to be here. From my little bit of testing, it is slightly directional. So some people, if you just have this system here with the 20 ticks, it will work most of the time, but this makes it pretty much foolproof and makes it so that this funnel will only take one fueling tank at a time. The exact same thing is happening over here. If we just throw in a couple of large filling tanks, you can see that it fills up. This is working and you can see that this is a lot quicker in getting the lava than this one. This one has to go through two tries before lava is filled back up again. So this one is a little bit quicker, meaning that these timings are even more specific. 
But as you can see, it is working. It fills it up to full speed with honestly some very basic redstone components. The most expensive thing being these pulse extenders because of the brass sheet there but still it is relatively affordable. To get to building this thing, I'm gonna do the water version. You can copy this if you're gonna build the lava one. It is literally the exact same, except you're pumping in lava instead of water. And that is really simple. You just place a pipe next to it and pump it in and then power whatever pump and you'll still need to power the deployer as normal. The schematics of these will obviously include the creative motor and the pump and creative fluid tank. You obviously can't use those in survival. So you have to remove them and connect it to power and a lava source by yourself. But let's get into it. The ingredients for this build are obviously going to be in the description. I will have uh, a separate list for things that you need for the water generation versus the lava generation. But the ingredients for both are going to be in the description down below. The dimensions of this farm are four blocks deep by five blocks wide by five blocks tall including the hopper and barrel here that you could always move to the side if you need less space and you don't even need this. You can remove it and just filter it in with a hopper, reducing the height by two blocks, which is pretty good, but I think it's easier. And as long as you have the space, you can just place a barrel on top like that and it'll just work. Let's get on with the tutorial. We're going to start in the back left corner of the farm. I like looking at it from this front angle here so that you can access the full ones and access the barrel to put in the empty ones. So we're going to build it from the back left of the farm and we're just going to place in a block here with stairs on either side. This is where your water is going to go and this block will prevent water from flowing backwards and out of the farm. We're then going to place blocks on either side of it here and then an observer that is looking at this empty block here between the two stairs. We're then going to place one final block here that prevents any water from getting out and we can fill both of these stairs with water to built in the source block here. Right behind the observer, we're going to get it in our redstone line. So we're just going to place two redstone dust sideways like this, a block of any kind really with redstone dust on top of it like that. And then two more blocks here that are kind of height, well, height level in line with this redstone dust so that we can go up another block here. We're then going to place in a top slab so that this redstone dust is still connected and going up and then just a normal block there. And we're going to put two pulse extenders on both of these. These are the pulse extenders that power the andesite funnel and the power latch. The left one is going to be set to 20 ticks and the right one is 22. This will just have it so that the andesite funnel is powered for two ticks less than the powered latch so that it drops just one item out. We can then get in our hopper and storage system. So we're going to place a just temporary block next to the observer. And then you're going to place your barrel on top of that with a hopper going into it. The pulse extender should line up with the hopper and just be one block above like this. To the right of the hopper, we're going to need to place a block here with the power latch next to it facing towards the hopper so that this pulse extender is going into the side. And then you can place a redstone block or what we can do if you don't have an infinite redstone farm or anything, you can just place a lever on this side of the block so that it doesn't power anything else. If you do this one, it'll power that redstone. We don't want that. But if you put it on this side of the block, it'll power it and it'll act like a redstone block without being expensive. With that setup, we can get in the deployer already. We're going to place a temporary block next to this hopper here with a deployer on top of it facing downward. You can really power this in any direction that you'd like. It super doesn't matter. If you want, you can rotate the deployer so that it is facing sideways here and that really won't change anything. You'll just have to power it from the side then. I'm going to power it from behind because it's easier to hide the power input if you just bring it down this way. But again, you can power it from the side if you'd like. On this side of the deployer, we're just going to place an andesite funnel facing out of it. It should be powered from this power latch here, and it should be going straight into the hopper, which then goes into the barrel there. Now for the deployer, we can place this really in any way that we want. We can place a hopper and then a barrel on top of it. You can grab the hopper and put it on top or in front if you'd like. It doesn't matter. You can fill it in with a belt if you're having this far away, like you could have a belt going into this with the funnel super doesn't matter. We just need a way for items to get into this deployer. Once we've done that, I think we're done. We can just fill this up with filling tanks. And as you can see, this is filling up. You should see that once this gets full, this pulse extender should turn off. And then this one turns off directly after it, leaving a two ticket pulse for this andesite funnel to drop out one filling tank only, which it has, which means it is working. If it isn't working for you, uh, I haven't tested this on a server since I'm only playing on single player. You might have to mess with these timings a little bit. If no items are coming out, just extend this to 23 or 24. And if multiple items are coming out, shrink it to 20, 
23, 22, 21. Just make sure that it's more than a tick away from this one, because if they're both 20, they'll both turn off at the same time and that just won't work. So you can mess with these. These aren't set in stone. This just works in my single player worlds with a reasonable amount of client side lag. I'm not sure how server lag will deal with it. So you might have to change this one up or down. And that's the farm. It is super simple and pretty compact for what it's doing. A lot of the other designs that I've seen that kind of fix the issue of the list filter with respect data not working for some reason are pretty big and require other mods. And this one is create and then create stuff and additions because that's required for the large filling tank. But then as otherwise, just pretty much straight create and vanilla circuitry. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave a like. I have a bunch of other tutorials on my channel if you want to see more. All right, peace.